Good morning. This is uh, Hilario B. Bilen, the lecturer and the professor of the subject Educational Research Method. Whether your course is Master of Divinity, Master of Arts in Education, Master of Arts in Theology, or Doctor of Philosophy. So again, our subject this morning is Educational Method of Research. So you can see in the screen my cell phone number, my messenger, and my uh, email address. Before we go to our subject this morning, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we are so thankful this morning that we are gathered again. And may we ask one more time your presence, especially your guidance, your wisdom, and your knowledge to be imparted to us that we may comprehend everything that we are going to hear in order, in order for us to learn more about educational research method. We are so thankful. This is our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And again, our course is educational method of research. Uh, this is our course description. The subject define the essentials of the research process. This mo the module consists of the basic concepts and methods of research. It presents updated materials with examples and points out the discussions on the organization of a research in form and style of a thesis or dissertation. So, again, this is our course description of our subject. Now, uh, I'm just giving you some of our learning objectives of this subject. At the end of this course, at the end of this subject, especially on the last day of this semester, you will know the meaning of research and its process and functions. You can discuss the research problems, its, its sources, objectives, and its significance. Frame and discuss hypothesis, assumption, and its scope and delimitation. We can describe or you can describe local and foreign literature and studies. You can analyze the research design to be used. Show how sampling is done to get the number of respondents. We are going to discuss the data collection technique, data analysis, and data interpretation. You can make a research proposal, analyze the bibliography, and put noting examples. And last, critic the examples given of research work. Okay, these are the learning objectives. You know, what are the scope of the subject? So in this subject, we are going to talk and discuss from the very beginning, the nature and functions of research, the research title, the problems, or, we, or in other words, the statement of the problem and its background. The review of related literature and studies. Let's talk about the research design or methods or in other words, methodology. We will discuss also about data gathering or data collection. 
Sampling the sign. Data analysis and interpretation. And you and I must know, because we will talk about the summary, the conclusions and recommendations. And you must know how to write a thesis proposal later on. And then let's talk about the bibliography, the footnoting, and the appendixes. These are the scope of our subject this morning. Now, the module content. In writing the module, its contents should be as relevant to the process undergone in the conduct of the subject. Research and report writing, its contents should include all the basic stages in the research process. The sequencing of the steps should be as close to each other. Some examples of the topics are taken care of so that the contents will not result in a poor presentation. Now, these are the requirements of the subject. At least you must read te the textbooks because uh, there are many textbooks. At least you can read the textbooks, some books or the references. And especially, you must submit a thesis proposal at the end of the semester. Come again, thesis proposal. Now, I'm just giving you only um, at least uh, six grading system of the subject. Attendance is a mass. Quiz. Thesis proposal. At least we have the prelim, the midterm exam, and the final exam. So this is our grading system that is around, at least around 100%. Now, uh, uh, what are the uh, policies about attendance? Of course, students must at all, I'm sorry, students must attend all scheduled classes. There is no makeup class will be given to the students who miss a class during the course. And don't forget, three absences means failure of the subject. Again, at least we have around 17 to 18 sessions. Come again, at least we have 17 or 18 sessions. This is our first session of the subject and three tardiness is equivalent to one absent so please be careful about tardiness now what are your responsibilities being the student of course you have to come to class on time attend all scheduled classes you must listen to class lectures you must know how to take notes meet sit work and assignment deadlines so when i say deadlines when i say you have to submit your proposal at the end of the semester don't submit to me after the semester cellular phones must be in silent mood during the class you must know how to respect yourself your your fellow students and of course the professor and please participate in class activities. Now, uh, we will be tackling about this. These are the, ten, the table of contents of the subject. So let's talk about the, so, so we have the, we discussed a while ago, the subject description, the objectives, the scope of the subject, the module content, the subject requirements, the grading system, the attendance policy, the student responsibilities, and the references. And we are going to talk uh, in chapter one. We will he we will see and hear everything in this uh, not not this lecture, but this is the beginning of the lecture. 
We have the nature and function of research. We will be tackling that in chapter one. And at the end of the lecture, there uh, you have to answer the lesson worksheet. In chapter two, we will talk about how to research. Uh, no, sorry, sorry. How to write the title. You must know how to formulate the problems. And we must know the background of the problem. At the end of the uh, session, you have to answer the lesson worksheet. In chapter three, we have the review of related literature and studies. At the end, we have you have a lesson worksheet, so you must answer the questionnaire or the question. And fourth, we have the research design, so you must know how later on about research design. At the end, again, there is a lesson worksheet. Chapter five, we will be talking about the data collection. In chapter 6, we have the sampling design for respondents. In chapter 7, uh, let's talk about the analysis, or oh, sorry, the data analysis and interpretation. Chapter 8, we have the summary, the conclusion, and the recommendations. In chapter 9, we are going to the writing a, a process proposal. So at least we must understand how to write a thesis proposal. Or a research proposal. In chart, chapter 10, we will be talking about footnoting, bibliography, and we will be, I'm, I'm just showing you some of the examples or model of bibliography, footnoting, bibliography, and then the final examination. Now, now please, uh, uh, there are some references, but if you are fan of, uh, if you are fan of Doing the research, there are many books regarding uh, research. Uh, we have here the uh, the uh, book about how to of qualitative research. We have the systematic approaches to a successful literature review. Your dissertation. Okay, so plan your dissertation. And we have also the uh, research design, qualitative, quantitative, and mixed methods approaches. We have also the book about marketing research methods, quantitative and qualitative approaches. Uh, there's also a book, Research Methodology, the tools and techniques, doing qualitative research online, and many, many more. I'm just uh, showing you some of the books that we are going to use in this lecture or in this session. Come again. This is our first session of the subject, the educational research method. Now, again, we must be you must be, clar be clarified. When we talk about educational research method, this is a, uh, uh, in a very simple word, this is how to write a thesis, this is how to write a dissertation or a term paper. If you are studying Master of Arts, you must write your thesis. But if you are now studying doctorate when we say doctorate whether doctor of philosophy doctor of theology doctor of education and others that is the so-called doctorate degree and you must write the so-called dissertation instead of thesis because the other word for no the the, the term in doctorate is dissertation so if you are studying doctorate you you must write your dissertation so uh, at least before receiving the title as doctor before your name you must write a thesis depend your thesis or dissertation and uh, after uh, depending you will be uh, and uh, after passing you will become a full fledged doctor. Now, the question is this. This is the question. What is 
research. So what is as a research? Again, this is just the introduction of the subject. I want you to listen carefully. I want you to lend, I, I just want you to lend me your ears. Okay? Now, it is because I'm putting this in the LMS, in the video. I can put also here in the in my uh, YouTube and uh, in my Facebook. But especially the students, my students, you keep on going back and uh, reviewing this um, session by uh, going into our LMS. Okay? So what is research? So what is research? Now, research is an active, diligent, and systematic process of inquiry in order to discover, interpret, or revise facts, events, behaviors, or theories, or to make practical applications with the help of such facts, laws of theories. That is one definition of research. Other definition is the term research is also used to describe the collection of information about a particular subject. Another meaning is research means a systematic investigation in clothing research development, testing and evaluation designed to develop or contribute to generalizable knowledge. Other meaning is activities which meet this definition constitute research for purposes of this policy, whether or not they are conducted or supported under a program which is considered research for other purposes. Okay? So that is research. So... There are many definitions. I, I just want I just want to read one more. Scientific or technical research and development of new production processes or products coupled with analysis and measures that provide information to potential users regarding the application of the new product or process. Demonstration test the feasibility of applying these products or processes via pilot plans and other pre-commercial applications. Now check this. What is a research? Research is a combination of two words. Re plus search. We call that research. Re means repeat. Re means again and again. Search is to find out something. So if you want to find out something, you have to do it again and again. That is research. You have to observe collection of data. When we talk about either a person, a phenomenon, and then we have the conclusion, come again, again, and again, and again. And then later on, you have to analyze the data. Come again, that is research. Or research. Now, uh, when we talk about research process, because there must be steps to be done, in order for you to do the research. Okay? So, research process, because you will do this. This involves several steps to meet the major kind of research. Again, when we say, re, uh, if you will go back again, research. Okay? Research. 
or research. First, it must begin with a problem which the researcher has experienced. So if there is no problem, there is no research. What is the use of doing a research without a problem? So because you want the solution. You want to find out the reason why, how. Okay, so again, in research process, it must begin with a problem. Or in other words, statement of a problem so there must be a statement of a problem secondly what objectives what objectives are within the problem use of the title okay don't worry as we go on i will explain this step by step during this semester Okay, what are the objectives? Third, the formulation of hypothesis. When we say hypothesis, you want to see if there is a relationship between two variables or a difference between two variables. So that is hypothesis. And then, or get what research design should be used. Later on, I will discuss what are the methods to be used, what designs to be used in your thesis writing. Oh, I'm sorry, in your thesis or dissertation. This is followed by the collection of data using the right method technique. So don't jump into conclusion without collecting data. For example, when we talk about statistics, don't tell me that women, uh, more women than men. Well, maybe it is because you can see more women nowadays. No, 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 no. We must always go with the collection of data. Okay, so please don't jump into conclusion. Six, make tabular forms of statistical treatment follows. So meaning in every numbers, you must put in a table. That's why we have the table one, table two, table three. Okay. Later on, uh, what? formulas are you going to use in your thesis or dissertation are you going to use the percentage are you going to use the uh, uh, the so-called uh, <clears throat> uh, chi-square standard deviation mean and others there are many statistical formulas i will discuss few only in this subject but in our in other in our other subject i'll be talking about statistics as a subject and i will teach many formula there many kinds of formula in order for you how to tabulate your data seven you must know how to present analyze and interpret the final form of data and the last you must know how to write the summary the conclusion and the recommendation these are the so-called research process or the proper or, or the, the, the process of doing research. Okay, so I'm just showing you this. Uh, I got in, um, in uh, uh, in in the pictures. Uh, I got this one. 
Now, uh, check this, check this, check. Uh, because I want you to see clearly the resource process, okay? Uh, if you are, uh, well, I don't know if uh, you have undergone uh, a thesis writing in your baccalaureate. But if you have the experience, there is no difference between the baby thesis that is in the baccalaureate, the thesis in the MA, and the dissertation in the doctorate. Okay? A while ago, a while ago, so there, first there must be a statement of problem. You must know your problem. And then, and then you must know how to, uh, now, that is in chapter 1. Okay, that's in chapter 1. Now, uh, we have the so-called chapter 2. We call that the review of related literature and related studies. Don't forget the word related. Don't forget the word related literature. Or related studies so you have to review previous writings you have to review previous findings on some of the thesis before you must review their concept and theories okay that is number two in research process you must know how to formulate the hypothesis you must know how to pick up the correct research design. Uh, as I told you a while ago, I'm going to teach you that in the next uh, session because this is our first session. Now you must know how to collect the data according to the right procedure of collecting data. Okay. Now you must know how to analyze the hypothesis. And then, in chapter 5, in chapter 5, okay, because when you say analyze, you must know how to present, analyze, the data collected. So, okay, that's why a while ago I told you you must put in, in a table. And then, um, you must know how to interpret. It is because later on, at the last part of your this is our dissertation. You are going to depend it in front of the uh, panel of examiners. Okay? Come again. What you have reviewed, what you have researched, you put it in writing, you put it in a book, in order, in order, please do it in order. And then later on, you, have, you will stand in front of the panel of examiners and report and then the panel of examiners will scrutinize your research so you have to answer all inquiries regarding your thesis or dissertation you will satisfy them in order for them to give you a correct or a passing grade because if they will not give you a passing grade you have to do it again Okay, you have to do it again. Don't forget that. Okay. Now, uh, let's talk about the functions of research. Come again, the functions of research. Um, first, research corrects perceptions as well as expands them. Now, why you are doing this? For example, have you seen an electric pan and then you push the button and the propeller starts moving and it's giving you air now do you understand how it works maybe no I, i'm talking about functions of research so maybe you will tell me well i don't know that's why research corrects 
perceptions as well as expands them. There must be an idea or understanding about how things work. Secondly, research gathers information on subjects or phenomena we lack or have little knowledge about. I believe you know it very well. We heard something like this. Little knowledge is very dangerous. Okay? Little knowledge is very dangerous. That's why we have to do the research again and again in order for us to learn more about things, about life. Okay? Uh, third, research develops and evaluates methods that test concepts, practices, and theories. Okay? There are concept practices and theories that must be, that it, it must be developed. We will evaluate it because without it all, it's not good. So again, that is one of the function of research. Fourth function is research also develops and evaluates methods that test concepts, practices, and theories. Is this concept correct? Is this practices? Is is the practices that we are practicing is correct? How about the theories? Is it correct? There are many theories. Be careful about theory. Theory is still a theory. There, it must, it, there must be proof about theories. Okay? Now, if somebody, well, uh, during my elementary days, I was taught, I received teaching like this. That man, that man came from a. That man came from something. I am not uh, here to contradict that. Now, in the scripture, men were created by God. So my my point is, before you will give your your uh, idea about something, do the research first, please. Okay? Uh, PIP, research obtains knowledge for practical purposes like solving problems on population explosion, drug addiction, job and denial delinquency, and the like. Okay. Um, well, again, again, um, uh, there are many theories today about the COVID-19. We heard a lot about like this. Somebody is, oh, how can I say this? This is pandemia, meaning there is, there are people at the back who plan this and their plan is to kill many people because this world are full of human beings now okay so through research we have to obtain knowledge and the last research provides hard facts which serve as basis for planning, decision making, project implementation, monitoring, and evaluation. Okay? So, well, praise God. In every educational institution, there is always a research department. Whether you will go to company, there's always a research division or research uh, department. Okay, well, praise God. We are spending a lot of money just to do the research. Okay, why, why we have a lot of inventions now? That is the result of research. Now, 
I believe you know it very well that life is better now, that life is easier now because of the result of research. Again, my advice is this. Do a research also about something. If you want to find out something, do a research. Okay? Uh, please. Now, uh, again, uh, because I'm just giving you only a, a lecture, at least a, an hour. Now, I want you to do the other thing, the other minutes of the subject by doing the research. I'm just showing you a sample of a thesis product or a dissertation. Now, I'm just showing you the content of the thesis, the complete thesis or complete dissertation, I'm just showing you the example of a thesis product, the product of a thesis. Okay? Come again, this is the content of a thesis or a dissertation. Starts from the thesis title. We have the approval seat, the acceptance seat, the acknowledgement, when we say acknowledgement, who are those people you are going to say thank you? It is because in one way or another they help you in doing your research. Dedication, uh, whom you dedicate your work. Abstract, when you say the abstract, it is a... Uh, uh, it is a, a, it's a, a, a glance about the whole thesis. Of course, you have the table of contents, the list of tables. When you say list of tables, you will see there table one, table two, table three. All tables of, that you're going to use in your thesis, you will list all here under this uh, category. And the list of the features. Okay. The difference between table is and figure is a figure is like a picture. Okay, that's a picture. Now, that is, we call this, please, please, we call this preliminaries. Come again. This is title up to list of figures. We call that preliminaries. Okay. Now, under, uh, uh, please, under chapter one of your thesis or your dissertation, we, we call that the problem and its background. Of course, you have the introduction. The introduction is about uh, a, 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 what do you call that? A um, brief background of your topic. Brief background of your research. And then you have the conceptual framework. Now, what is the difference between conceptual framework and the conceptual paradigm? The conceptual paradigm is like uh, it's like a picture. The framework is you will put that picture inwards. Come again. The, the conceptual paradigm is like a picture. The framework is put inwards that picture. Then we have the theoretical framework. You must use a theory from other authors. And then under chapter one, we, you have the statement of problem. Come again, no problem, no solution. No problem, no research. So a statement of the problem is very important because there is no problem, there is no research, there is no solution. You have the null hypothesis. You have the hypothesis. Of course, you have the scope and the limit, limitation of the study. Uh, please, I'm just showing you the content of the whole thesis and dissertation. Later on, in the next uh, session, I will explain it to you one by one or step by step. Of course, you have the significance of the study. Maybe you will ask me, what is significance of the study? Please, I will explain that later on, step by step. And the last part of your chapter one is the definition of term. 
Uh, under chapter 2, we have the review of related literature and studies. Review of related literature and studies. Now, I put here, there are five parts of the chapter 2. We have the parent literature, the local literature, the parent studies, the local studies, and then the last part of chapter 2 is the justification of the study. Now, a little clarification about the difference between parent literature and local literature. In the Philippines, you're studying in the Philippines. You are studying in the Philippines. You are studying in any school in the Philippines, inside the Philippines. So when we say parent literature, you are writing a book. You are write, you, you are reading a book. You check why parent literature. You check the publisher and the, 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 the name of the publisher and the place of the publisher. If the publisher is is uh, uh, outside the Philippine uh, company and the address is Hong Kong, Singapore, or America, or Thailand, that is parent literature. Always check the address of the, com of the company. The, le the local literature is a book, a book written by somebody but the publisher and the address of publisher is in the inside the Philippines. For example, a national bookstore. The office is Pasig, that is local literature. Now, for example, for example only, please, for example only, national bookstore, but the address is Canada. Please, I'm just, uh, I'm just giving you only an example. Halim, uh, example is National Bookstore, publisher. But the address is Canada. That is parent literature. What's the difference between parent studies and local studies? Parent study is you are, you are reading a, a thesis. You are reading a dissertation. Now, when you say parent study is the thesis, the thesis, for example, for example, is uh, American University, okay, New York. That is parent studies. Why? That thesis is uh, from an American school and the address is uh, America. Local study is you are you are reading or you are holding a thesis or a dissertation. The school is a school, a college, a university inside the Philippines, and the address is in the Philippines. For example, please, for example, University of the East. The address there is Claro M. Recto, Manila, Philippines. Therefore, that thesis is local study. Justification of the study. So you're going to justify your chapter two. You are going to justify all those books and literatures and partners or, or thesis that you have gathered. You have to justify. You have to justify. Okay? That is justification of the study. Uh, in... Um, in chapter three of your whole thesis, we call that the methodology or methodology and sources of data. For example, only you have the research design. Come again, I keep on telling you, I will discuss this step by step and one, one by one in the next session. You have the locale and population. You have the sampling design. You have the gathering data procedure and the statistical treatment. You must put all uh, those formulas that you're going to use in your thesis or dissertation. In chapter four, that is the presentations, the analysis, and the interpretation. Now, again, suppose you have five 
statement of the problem that was posted in chapter 1. Now, the answer must be presented in chapter 4. The answer, please, when we say problem number 1, you can check this, from chapter 1, that is the uh, start of the problem. Now, the answer, you can see it now in chapter 4. You will present with the analysis and with the interpretation, including the table. Okay? Again, that is chapter 4 of your whole thesis. Okay? Now, uh... In chapter 5, we have the so-called summary, conclusions, and recommendations. Of course, you have the summary. I believe uh, you know what is summary. It's, uh, you just summarize your research, the major findings. You have the conclusions, whether you have the implications and the recommendations. That is the content of chapter 5 of your whole thesis. And then you have to write down all your references under bibliography. In the appendixes, I, I just put only two examples of the appendixes. I put the questionnaire and the curriculum vitae. But you can put other appendix, for example, pictures. Uh, for example, uh, 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 what else? Uh, maybe you want to show some um, uh, some uh, facts. You will put that in the so-called appendixes. Okay. So again, uh, please, uh, uh, please uh, come again. This uh, this is these are the contents of the whole thesis now um, if you are doing the baccalaureate when i say baccalaureate i'm talking about the bachelor's degree at least less than 100 pages come again baccalaureate or bachelor's degree at least less than 100 pages including your curriculum vitae but when we say, now in the baccalaureate, we are, we are just using the so-called baby thesis. But in the master, in the master, whether you are, you, are, you are taking the master of arts, the master of divinity, master of geology, or others, okay, that we call that thesis. At least, this is, is at least, at least, uh, uh, at least, at, at least around 150 pages. But when we talk about dissertation, now, 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 uh, when we talk about the dissertation, is more pages, please, more pages. And uh, the difference between a uh, a uh, master thesis and 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 dissertation of the doctorate is the scope, the scope of your study. Uh, please, I'm just, uh, in a layman's term, in a layman's term, if you are writing your thesis, for example, the scope and the limitation is Manila. Manila. So, again, that is only inside Manila. But when you talk about dissertation, you have to include other cities and towns of Metro Manila or in other words national capital region that is the difference between a master thesis and a doctoral dissertation the scope the limitation okay so again again um uh, again, I'm not teaching you everything how to write, it, how to do the writing of a thesis. I'm just giving you some insight. But the one I'm teaching you is the complete 
method and way of writing of writing a thesis and a dissertation. Uh, but I'm not telling you that this is the uh, because uh, okay if you are reading other books, okay maybe you will tell me uh, in other books is that's why that's why okay that's why like this. We are doing this as a subject, as a course, in order for you to uh, know how to do it. Maybe if God permit, in this, in this, uh, like in in the, in the next lectures, maybe if we have we have a lot of time, I will show you the uh, sample of a thesis and the format of a thesis, the format. The pagination, the uh, the margins, the indent, the indention. Uh, actually, nowadays I'm not asking you to use the footnoting anymore. In other schools and universities, still they are using the uh, the Chicago. Uh, um the others is uh about kate they are using that but uh, uh, please please uh i'm advising you uh, advising you in doing and preparing your uh, thesis or dissertation please choose between the two the apa or the MLA. Maybe you you will tell me I we don't know that, sir. Please. In this in the next lectures, I will explain that. I will teach that. APA stands for American Psychological Association style of writing, and the MNL. Ah, no, sorry, MLA, Modern language association style of writing come again apa or mla okay so uh you can see how now uh, for example you are using uh, one author how to write in the bibliography the one author the two authors the three authors or more than four authors how to write it in the bibliography uh, please uh, um, we will do it in the next uh, slide uh, i'm sorry in the next uh, uh, session um of course you have the list of tables table one table two table three and others and then you have the list of features either you have figure one figure two i'm just in the pages i'm just uh, showing you an, an example Come again, uh, this is the content of your thesis or dissertation. Now, uh, this, at uh, the last part of this session, I put, I put it here, questions, some questions, and in order for you to review uh, this session, you, know, you must know how to define what is research, process pure research and practical research okay you can uh, differentiate the major types of research later on uh, expand the research process the functions of research okay so again uh, i'm just uh, uh, in order for you to review it but it is because i recorded this you keep you can keep on reviewing and you can keep on going back to your study this lecture and session again uh, please uh, if you have any inquiry or questions you can send me text you can uh, you can uh, send me in messenger or in my uh, cell phone numbers you can keep in touch with me uh, I'm here to help you. Okay, I'm here to help you. Uh, please, I am more than willing to help you 
and guide you. Okay? Because I know and you know that we are, okay, uh, you must know the relationship between a professor and a student. Before, I am also a student with my, my professor. But now, praise God, because God put me in this, in this situation that I am now the lecturer, I am now the professor. Now, if God permit, uh, please, 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 uh, please be guided accordingly. If you are now uh, teaching, if you are now teaching, uh, don't keep on putting the word professor in your title. Okay? Because in professor, we have the so-called assistant professor, we have the associate professor, and we have the professor. In professor, we have professor 1, professor 2, professor 3, professor 4, professor 5, professor 6, and the Paul Pledge professor. Okay? So, I hope oh, you must know the difference between instructor, one, two, three, assistant professor, one, two, three, uh, associate professor, one, two, three, four, and, and professor, one, two, three, four, five, six, and the last is the Paul Pledge professor. Okay? My prayer is this. Maybe some of you are now teaching, whether in elementary, whether in high school, or maybe some of you are now teaching in the college. I hope this lecture can guide you and help you how to do a research, how to do and write your thesis and your dissertation. So, as your professor, Dr. Hilario Venasilie Bilen. I just want you to know that I love teaching if I, and, of course, I love you as my student. Come again, if you have any uh, inquiry and question, yes, uh, I, I put there my uh, uh, messenger and my... Uh, and my uh, cell phone numbers, please. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for guiding us, for giving us the heart of listening, the art, the art of listening, the heart and the art of listening. It is because, Lord, by just listening, we are learning. By just uh, learning, one day we will be going to teach the same subject to, our, to, the, to the next generation students in this society and in this country. Bless us, Lord. Bless my students, Lord. Give us the understanding that we may comprehend everything that we have heard this evening. Thank you, because this is our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Thank you. And goodbye.